It's finally time to see what is in this absolutely gigantic box. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Like, seriously, what's up with this box? <laughs> the ones are so small in comparison. And despite being big, there sure is a lot of movement in here, so it kind of has me scared. But anyways, this was the deal I found on the Gear Exchange, which is basically Sweetwater's version of reverb that they're trying to get off the ground. And I happened to do a hunting episode one night that you can check out here if you're interested. That was just a spur of the moment thing, and I found this awesome V that I was wanting to document. Now, this one might not be clean enough for my personal collection, but since this model is so rare, it needed to be documented. But even though this is a Heritage Series 80s Gibson Lifton reissue style case, that's not what we're documenting today. This is a 2013 Gibson Rudolf Schenker Signature Flying V. Now we've been talking a lot about Rudolf Schenker lately and the Scorpions with their whole signature guitars, but we need to talk about this particular model. Because to date, this is probably the most accurate one that Gibson has created as compared to the one that Rudolph actually used in the Scorpions that's based off of his 70s original one. Because look, we've got the doofy rounded over headstock that the 70s ones are known for. We also have an extra pronounced volute. This is actually one of the most accurate volutes I've seen during the Henry J era. That's awesome. The pickguard looks a little bit strange because we have the red and white version, but there was also a black and white version out there. I'm deeply impressed that the shelf neck construction is also correct on this. Pretty much the only thing they didn't really get right is we do not have the ABR1 bridge, but Gibson USA's at the time really did not use that. So first impressions, I'm actually really impressed with this model, even more so than I thought I was going to be. This has got some seriously cool specs, but in case you missed my previous videos, let's learn a little about the Scorpions and Rudolf Schenker. The Scorpions, they have a whole list of songs that you know of, but probably their big most famous one is Rock You Like a Hurricane. But the Shanker Brothers, both Michael and Rudolph, are very well known for this half and half black and white design. And the signature guitar was first given around 1983-84ish. And it looked like this, it was the new thrash metal style Flying V. There were no pick guards or anything like that. It was basically part of Gibson's designer series, where they were doing some weird odd squiggly guitars and lines. But this particular one was a finish based off of Rudolph's. 70s flying V. But from the first signature iteration, it's about every 10 years Gibson seems to do a new one. So after the 84-85-ish run, there was one in 1993 where they did 103 of them and they were signed by him. Then 10 years later, 2003, we've got another one with some signatures, but these ones weren't exactly accurate with the specs. I mean, neither was the first one. These were all based off of 67 style flying Vs, whereas his was a 70s, so it was a little bit different. So then 2013 rolls around, we get this limited edition. There were 400 of these things made. Half of them were initially for the US market, and then the other half were for the international sales. And it's like the first time they finally got these specs right, as we were talking about. Again, it's not a perfect one for one replica, but it's pretty good for a Gibson USA product. The only thing that's a little bit weird on these is due to the time that this was birthed, it's 2013, they had to use a rosewood alternative. At least that's what Gibson liked to use. So this is actually a Granadillo fretboard, and Granadillo can be lots of fun. I personally prefer baked maple out of this era, but eh, it is what it is. It's a little bit more rosier than rosewood. So I'm glad I documented this because I didn't realize these had Granadillo before this episode. This particular version uses a 50 7 classic in the neck and a plus in the bridge. So the original 80s ones would have dirty fingers, unless you've got a weird freak like mine that came stock with Tim Shaw PAFs. But I've got to say, this feels so close to a 70s flying V, it's hilarious. Like the neck profile is nothing like it, but as far as the construction, as far as this goes, I mean, you gotta remember, this is way before the Gibson 70s flying V that they currently have in production right now that you can check out this review and demo to learn more. I mean, we'll see this on the workbench. This is a really ridiculously flat neck. Like there is almost no carve to this thing. Kind of feels like a classical guitar in that sense, but not ridiculously wide. And believe it or not, they were only $14.99 brand new. And even if you account for current day inflation, that'd only be like $2,000 newish. If this was offered today from Gibson USA, it would be an easy $3,000 to $3,500 guitar. And since it seems about every 10 years we get a new one, we are due this year. And I would like to petition Gibson to make it a true custom shop this time. No longer Gibson USA's. Let's give Rudolph a full one-on-one -on -one replica Murphy Lab aged hyper collector piece. I think that would be fun. So, to learn more about this one, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take a look at its parts and specs. You 
inside the Shanker V. Let's discover its secrets. So the first thing you'll notice here is we actually have a pick guard and pickup rings. That's kind of redundant. Usually when you have a 67 style flying V pick guard, you just have the pickups within the pick guard themselves like this. This became a popular modification because of what I was telling you earlier. You see how much the neck sticks up on these guys? People wanted hotter outputs, so they would add these pickup rings to get the pickups closer to them because you could only get so close when they're flush mounted. But the pickup set in this one is what I told you earlier. You've got a 57 classic in the neck and the bridge is a 57 classic plus. Our bridge is 7.87k ohms which honestly seems kind of light for a 57 Classic Plus, especially when the neck is actually outranking it at 8.04. So I'll be curious to see if somebody's flipped this around, which is odd, but it happens sometimes. However, I noticed something fascinating. Looking at the backside of the pickguard, these are actually quick connect pickups, but they solder them to the pots like usual. So I don't know if Gibson just had some 57 classics with quick connects that they needed to use up or what's the story on that? But it appears to be factory original to me. And you can see your Gibson branded pots on the underside here. It's all pretty standard stuff. But here's what the body looks like with the pick guard taken off. You can actually see, since this one was gigged, it actually did start pure white and it has aged just a tad, but nowhere near as much as my 80s one. Here's the wrap for our controls and the ground wire goes into that bridge post. And I'm not seeing any particular markings here and no neck tenons extending into the cavity or anything like that. But as far as our bridge and tailpiece goes, it's just your regular Nashville style. So that Nashville bridge looks like this. And the tailpiece is full weight Advanced Plating Incorporated branded. But you've got two volumes, neck volume and bridge volume with a master tone in our triangle configuration. I'm not entirely too sure why this one is red and white, but it seems to be the one that he prefers to use on stage even yet today. So if anybody knows, please, Fill me in because I'm just deeply confused. It's more of a brown color in person, but it's got a slight reddish hue. It honestly appears way more red in photos than it does in person. It's definitely darker than the rosy looking fretboard. As far as the white side, it's honestly in pretty good shape. You just got some dings down here from where a strap was rubbing against it, I guess. And the ebony side, it's got a lot of nicks and dings along the edges. This one was definitely played. And then right up along here, there's like some sort of a ding or something over there. Moving on from the mahogany body. Again, it's the mahogany neck with the granadillo fretboard. Now the cool thing about granadillo fretboards is you very commonly find some flame figuring within them. Like watch this area right there and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So as far as feel goes, I mean, it's similar to rosewood. I would say it's a little bit softer feeling and it definitely usually appears a little bit more red, but it kind of works on this guitar since we've got the red on this side of the pick guard for whatever reason. But it's just our acrylic dot inlays, nothing too fancy fancy as far as that goes, but it's the profile is the real reason you buy one of these. And I could be wrong, but a 12 inch fretboard radius actually seems a little bit too rounded. Seems to be closer to 10 inches in my opinion, but it's still a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. So we got a nut width of 1.69 inches. That's pretty standard. But by the 12th, it's 2.11. But look at that blade thin 0.82 at the first fret neck depth and then 0.92 by the 12th. That is a very thin neck profile. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. I think this kind of helps you see what I was talking about. This is definitely more so a D-shaped profile. I mean, it's ridiculously flat on the back, hardly any roundedness at all, but yet it still has the roundedness of the edges. So it is comfortable. It just takes some getting used to playing. You just have to feel this guitar in person to truly understand it. Now the headstock on this one is kind of interesting. Like if you actually compare it side by side to a 70s Flying V, this is like ridiculously small. But I think to compensate for that, they made the truss rod cover ridiculously small in comparison to those as well. Typically those will have a three screw adjustment. So they just kind of shrank this whole thing down, but gave it 70s stylings, especially with the Schaller style tuner tips on here. Just, you know, Give it the flair without being an exact reissue. I mean, that's what Gibson USA is all about, right? But our truss rod is in perfect shape on this one. And here's our smaller truss rod cover, 70s inspired. As far as the headstock angle, I measure about 13 degrees. Moving on to the back, you really can't tell much of a difference as compared to the 80s version because it's just that whole black and white design. 
So no control plates or anything like that, but we can document the condition of this one. Looks like something burnt the finish right there, either a chemical reaction or actually something hot. The reason I say that is over here, this actually looks like somebody's solder iron might have dropped a little pellet or something and burnt the finish because that's different from like a normal stand rash area. But you've got all the wear in the usual areas, nicks and dings along the edges. You've got some light finish checks where the neck joins to the body. It's just the seam line though. In fact, it's kind of hard to see unless you're really looking for it. And that's probably the worst area on the guitar as far as the clear coat layer being rubbed away and you can see a little bit of wood. In fact, you know what I bet that is? I think somebody tried to touch that up and it probably looked good until the finish <laughs> aged. That's why like on the neck, I could touch that up with my lacquer pen, but it'll just never look right. So it's better to leave it just as is to give it a relic vibe. But that's definitely the worst mark on the neck. Can you feel it when you play? A little bit. I wouldn't say it's too obtrusive. Somebody could drop fill that if it really bothered you. But overall, the neck's in okay shape. Just has a few nicks and dings. Gibson USA deserves an award for this volute. That looks exactly like what a late Kalamazoo volute would be because that is just gigantic. And I like the way they did the serial number on here. It's just barely into the black. So from far away, it just looks like it was a sloppy paint job. No, that's just because the finish ran into the numbers a little bit. But you also have the Made in USA 2013 stamp because of the year this one was produced. And yep, we've got some dings up here too. But very cool that we have the Schaller style 70s tips on the Grover tuners. But all said and done, this one weighs 6 pounds, 12.3 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how these sound. It's official. Somebody's swapped this around. I was wondering why the neck position sounded so bright. <laughs> Now that we know all about the 2013 Gibson signature, Rudolf Schenker Flying V, what are my final thoughts on this? I don't know, it feels like I've been making the same video the past couple of months, but <laughs> they are all different, trust me. And this one, it's really the neck profile that throws you for a loop. I'm not gonna say it's my favorite because I prefer a little bit more of a rounder neck, but this is exactly what Rudolf wants, so that's what he got. 
So I would suggest giving it a try if a D-shaped neck on a Gibson sounds appealing to you. If you can find one of these, they're kind of uncommon. I mean, this was birthed around the same time as like the Buckethead Les Paul. And this whole era is just well known for guitars that were very limited production and have just skyrocketed in value. Now, thankfully for this one, you do have some alternatives, so you're not forced to just get this. But as far as getting his preferred neck profile, so far, I would say it's probably the most accurate to what he wanted. So, Troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.